family evicted from home after 40 years. Locals ask when Kupiano Hospital will be opened. And countdown to Hunter's departure. Good evening and welcome. This is Thursday's News. I'm Kilawani. Concerns have been raised on how soon the newly constructed Abo District Hospital in, at Kopiano in Central Province will, will be opened. Patients, health workers and the affected population who frequent the temporary health centre spoke about the challenges they face. The new hospital has been lying idle after it was constructed about four years ago. Dennis Orere reports. Effective health service delivery in the rural areas of Papua New Guinea has always been a concern since the country's independence. In a recent interview with MTV News, former health minister, health secretary and a medical doctor by profession, Sepuka Temu, who is Abao MP, said although there have been heavy criticism of the country's health system, it is not substandard and is one of the best health systems in the Asia-Pacific region. When I was secretary for health, my greatest concern was the WHO requirements of dollar per population was not met. $10 WHO recommends that for medical drugs it should equate to $10 per citizen. Abao district in the central province has a total land area of more than 7,000 square kilometers and a significant part of the district are on the coastal areas, which is where the district center Kupiano is also located. Health service delivery in the Abao district has been very challenging, with facilities experiencing shortage of manpower and most facilities lacking required resources for effective service delivery. Abao MP Sepuka Temu, who is in his fourth term in parliament and has lately been facing a leadership tribunal, acknowledged the challenges that the district faces in terms of infrastructure development, saying there are efforts being made to address some of the challenges. Our problem mainly is in the Aroma Coast. Uh, the Paramana 8 Post is not working very well because the 8 Post totally left. Uh, and then when we build a Mapa 1, they removed it because of land disputes. Uh, and so we are now negotiating with the United States where they have a mission station near the Wagula Oval on this side. So they have agreed that they, they will provide land for us to build a major health center there. The former Kupiano Health Center was demolished some years ago to enable a new state-of-the-art district hospital to be built to better serve the affected population. This was through the oil search tax credit scheme. Thanks to the uh, national planning, who, 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 which manages the uh, tax credit scheme, I was able to, for four years, I was able to successfully negotiate oil search tax credit scheme to build our hospital. And uh, building under the fund that the oil search tax credit scheme uh, provided is now basically doing the final finishing touches right now. However, the new district hospital is yet to be opened for service, with the Abao MP saying during the recent interview that it is expected to be opened in the first quarter of this year. So what we have done is because the, of the provincial health authority system, Dr. James Amini and the Central Provincial Health Authority are now overseeing the further progress of the health systems in the district, in the province, and for this particular case, the district hospital in Kupiano. So it is a district hospital status. A temporary health centre has been operating over the past four to five years during the construction of the new district hospital, in which patients and others who use the small facility, including health workers, have expressed serious concern and are calling on the relevant authorities to have the new hospital opened at the earliest. A couple of things are, are going on at the same, same time. One is I've sat down with the Secretary for Department of Personal Management. I got uh, Dr. James Amini, the CEO for Central Province Health Authority, to meet because I want the, I want the 
the main power structure to be approved for the district hospital. A health worker at the temporary health center shared some challenges to MTV News off-camera, which include logistics, bed shortage, and lack of power supply where health workers use solar lights to serve patients in the night, or sometimes there is no light at all. Under the hospital building, we have a standalone generator for the district hospital. So the hospital has its own generator. So it's on the side of the, on the hill. So the generator is standalone until the power system comes from, comes from Mosby. So Dennis Orere, National MTV News. An unexpected encounter with an airplane in a remote village in Chimbu province has saved the life of a young man. Local community leader Motsi David chartered a Cessna caravan owned by the North Coast Aviation Company and flew into rural Nomane LLG in Karamui Nomane district to conduct awareness programs and host an end-of-the-year sporting tournament. While in the village, a group of men carried a sick man on a homemade stretcher and were walking to the near aid post. Upon seeing the condition of the men, Mr. David and the pilot ab aborted their flight plans and took him to Kundiawa. Mr. David said health services in rural and isolated areas need immediate attention from the government. He thanked North Coast Aviation and praised the work rural pilots airlifting sick people out of isolated areas. Meanwhile, the critically ill man is now being treated at the Sir Joseph Nombri Hospital in Kundiawa. A clash between two clans at Minj in Jiwaka province has seen many people injured and properties destroyed. The fight, which began last night over a drunken brawl, led to several houses burnt to ashes and people injured. The ethnic clash ended this morning when a local NGO, the Community Peace Advocacy Inc., stepped in to negotiate peace. Community leaders of both clans agreed to surrender the ringleaders involved in the fight. Minch Police Station Commander Gabriel House commended the community leaders and the NGO for negotiating peace. <laughs> You must have so. Me one bill of work one time. Talk me, give me a dog by me work one time. Partnership in policing. Law master, some police master. Most of the police now. Law of the police person is coming. And me work one time. Kiss him on the line, come and check. Law of the police. And New Guinea will resume its Focus 70 jet services to Arupa Airport, Kieta, starting on the 25th of January. This will also see the lifting of COVID restrictions, like testing requirements for travel into the autonomous region. And New Guinea has also announced there will be two weekly services to Kieta on Tuesdays and Fridays. You're watching National MTV News. More stories after the break. Welcome back to the news. A 78-year-old man from Central Province has been forcefully evicted by the National Housing Corporation. Henry Bono has been residing at Hohola 3 along Silkwood Street in their family home for over 40 years. The family has been locked out of their home for the second day, while it is understood new tenants are waiting to occupy the home. Henry Mora Bono of Domar village in Abau district of Central Province was forcefully evicted by the National Housing Corporation yesterday. According to the Bono family, officers from NHC arrived around 3 p.m. with the presence of police to execute an eviction notice of non-payment of rental areas. Uh, my grandfather here is currently 78 years old. Uh, he got this property in 1978 and we've been living in this home for almost 45 years. So what, what happened yesterday was inhuman, inhuman so we've been living, living, staying outside here since yesterday. This is my grandfather, 
He hasn't been working. He's, he's, he's disabled. The Bono family were shocked to witness this as the family had approached NHC in December last year after the final 24-hour notice to vacate was served on the family during the Christmas period. However, the Bono family says attempts were made to settle half of the areas after securing money with the intent to pay off the remaining balance through fortnightly installments but were refused. We tried our very best to do some payments but he hesitated. While he came yesterday, he, he also brought in the new tenant as well. That's not, that's against the policy, housing corporation policy, as I know. As he was here, he marched in. He came with his wife also. I tried talking to the entity managing director, but he refused. The family stated that they have been paying rentals to NHC faithfully for more than 40 years after acquiring the property through the low-cost housing scheme. The family entered into a tenancy agreement signed on the 14th of May 1978 with NHC. This old man has been bedridden and is disabled. He's been living all his life, staying on the bed like this. That was his first time that we brought him outside. He never been outside, he has been lying there. Henry Bono left formal employment as a building contractor in 2014 after seriously injuring his right leg. Since then, the tenancy was formally changed to his youngest daughter. I'm the youngest daughter of uh, my daddy and I started uh, paying the rent uh, in 2015 and I stopped in the last uh, three years uh, due to some financial uh, challenges. That's the reason I stopped paying. New Generation Papua Basin Chairman Peter Sem, who represents the Papuan region to address such issues, described the eviction as inhumane and wants this issue to be sorted out. And this is a classic example. I witnessed uh, the eviction yesterday. I was here, and I noticed the officers that uh, executed the, the eviction notice were more from the Highlands region. Majority of the officers that were here were from the Highlands region. There's probably one or two were probably uh, coastal or, or New Guinea Islands. Now, we're not going to sit back and watch this go on. Uh, the action they took yesterday, uh, you know, was inhuman. There is this old man in his house on his sick bed. They walk in, they remove everything, and they ask him to move out of the house. The family are now appealing to the National Housing Corporation Managing Director, Housing Minister Mosby Northwest MP, and NCD Governor to intervene and look into this matter. Podivai National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marpe recently paid tribute to the great work of the Lutheran Church in the development of PNG. He gave a keynote address during the 33rd Synod Gathering recently. He said churches complement the work of the government by bringing services to people in rural areas. Jamie Haro reports. In a message that spelled strongly of the uniting force of Christianity and the contribution of churches in PNG, Prime Minister James Marape acknowledged the work of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of PNG and all churches in the country. He made these remarks during the third day of the 33rd Synod before delegates of the 17 districts of ELC PNG. Being a son of a church missionary, Pierre Marape paid homage to missionaries who ran ahead of government workers who bring churches good news along with services such as education and health. Before there was a government worker in many parts of our country, the missionaries walked the length and breadth of our country not for money, fame or personal earthly prosperity, but they walked in purity of love for service to humanity because they were saving the altar of love, and that is Jesus Christ, the maker and king and creator of the universe. 
he said with a new generation of leaders coming into office, the government is now working out policies to move the country more in line with the ideals of Christianity. The Prime Minister stated that it is only fitting and right to give respect where it is due. Without the Christian perspective, the country would be looking from 800 or so different perspectives. Your place in our country is certain. Some areas that the church needs to partner government and step up and nutrient as our second biggest denomination in our country. We ask you, pick up education, pick up the health sector. As you do your ministry for the Lord, education and the health sector must be picked up by the nutrient church. As all the other Christian churches are asked for. The Prime Minister encouraged the ELC PNG to continue with its services in health and education and gave the government support in this area. Jamie Harrow, National MTV News. The Climate Change Development Authority cannot provide the much-needed revenue for the government. Speaking to the media recently, CCDA Acting Managing Director William Lakine says the PNG Forest Authority and the National Fisheries Authority are currently the largest revenue earner for the government. However, the forestry sector will be affected through the government's directive to ban all export of round logs by 2030. On the other hand, banning the export of round logs means conserving the forests. National Fisheries Authority is another big revenue winner for the government. National Forest Authority, through the export of log, is the major government's revenue owner. Why is the government trying to export, uh, ban the logging operation by 2030? So what this government is saying is that can climate change prove to this government that you can provide that alternative revenue? And we are telling the government that we will provide that revenue, 60 million per annum, which National Forest Authority collects it. We will provide more than 30, 60 million. We are looking at if our programs go the way we want it to go, we will provide one billion or two billion annually through climate change activities. And that's where we are trying to prove to the government that given the assistance of night, similar programs, we are telling the government that we will provide the alternative revenue and we will provide more than that. Central Province Governor Robert Agarobe visited Koitaki in the mountains of Sogari in the Karakuheri district yesterday. He officially launched the grading and graveling of the roads from Koitaki through to the village of Doe. This project is part of plans to promote agriculture, tourism and sports by linking roads in the Central Province. Over the past years, locals have been struggling to have access to proper roads in the Hiri Koyari LLG as many live in the rural areas. On Wednesday, Central Governor Robert Agarobe and his team visited Koitaki, situated in the LLG, to officially launch the road project from the area leading into Doe. The governor said it is a national road known as the Hubert Murray Highway, but less has been done by the government to link the road into the villages, therefore have sought to help the locals with the project through provincial funding. Governor Agarobe said the project is currently in the stages of grading and graveling as it will help provide easy road access to cultivate agricultural activities. Or get a line now, you must have a roads that responsibility block one one or government structure system. Also, let me talk, I'm no road blooming. But I need a policy in a plain block province. Me talk, me think of driving economy. Also, now me creating this type of call him the smart central plan. You know, time block work hard, time time block, you should head now work, think the good now work. So, people are creating smart central plan. Now, aim is a plan of driving economy, Louis. All get a man now, diplomacy involved with driving the economy. No one man, but sit on a play cast. Time block work ground. Before the project was launched, locals also contributed little funds to clear the road before the grading stages began. 
According to community representative Tom Tiki, this road has been a major concern for the locals. However, with the governor's help, they are grateful for the project moving forward. But now you see it up in the league league now and we more possibility, Lord. So I think that this is a road that been stopped long plat time, Lilith. You age you survey the street blood is a road. Pre-independent this line was an economic road. Currently the road project is being handled by the Department of Works, Central Province. Jamie Harrow, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0 0.3770 Australian dollars, 0 0.2346 Euro and 31.23 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee, cocoa and copra closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, palm oil closed higher and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. This is Thursday's news, Trika Sports is next, stay tuned for the details. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. It's the countdown towards the SPPNG Hunters' departure to Australia for the 2022 Queensland Hot Plus competition. After the festive season break, the team is back at training defence, the key area of focus. It was a hot and humid day in Port Moresby today, but the SPPNG Hunters were determined and powered through their sets. Defence is the priority with a few tackling drills, taking centre stage in today's session. After a well-deserved break during the festive period, the lads have returned, hitting the ground running, and coach Matthew Church says they have to fine-tune areas in their training. As you've seen today in, in that session, we, um, we want to get, make sure that we're getting dual contact, so two guys hitting at once so that we can control the rock. Um, so that's been our main focus, just, just our core skills, that, and with our, our attacking stuff, is just um, being more efficient with the ball. Three new players have joined the pre-season training with Mendy Muruk's duo, Nelson Ye and Weza Tenza, with Lace Next Tigers forward Junior Rob getting another call up to the Hunters. Yeah, look, we've been specific in, in who we've targeted or who we've brought in to the, to the side. Um, Weza comes in um, as the reigning Digicel hooker of the year. Nelson comes in as the reigning back rower of the year. Junior Rock's been fairly consistent at Digicel Cup level and I felt like um, losing a fair bit of experience with Appel, um, that he could fill the void there in terms of that. Appel Kapinius, the Hunters' second rower, had been released by the team's management on disciplinary grounds, and coach Matthew Church says Apple had made some wrong decisions. Apple was made very aware of his mistakes. He makes mistakes last year and mistakes this year. He sat down with all the coaching staff. I don't make decisions just based on myself. We sat down as a whole uh, staff and spoke about why he was being uh, removed from camp. Apple has some stuff that he needs to work on in and around putting the team first. He, he chose to put himself first in a number of um, occasions. Kapinias was on the radar of some NRL clubs and has missed the opportunity. Which is unfortunate um, for Appel because he's highly talented and he was looking at getting scouted by NRL clubs last year. Um, so he's not done himself no favours, but it's a lesson that a young man needs to learn. Some players in the Hunter's side had faced disciplinary action in the past and have come back to the team. Coach Matthew Church says he believes in second chances. Uh, everyone in, deserves a second chance under my watch. Um, Junior's quite aware of uh, his responsibilities and what I expect of him. And if, yeah, if he doesn't want to live up to that, then he won't be a hunter. And that'll be, that'll be the final cross. The final team is set to depart the shores of Papua New Guinea towards the end of this month. And the players are closely being monitored using specific criterias. Three things that we look for are how hard they're willing to work every single day. 
Um, the second thing is how, how well they prepare for training each day, which means you know drinking, drinking enough water, eating well, sleeping well. Uh, and the third thing is how they, how they treat people. Uh, or how they respond to adversity. So there are three things that have been judged on in this whole pre-season. All the final documents for travel down to Australia are close to being finalised, with COVID-19 vaccination compulsory for all the players. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. PNG Rugby Union have their sights set on two major Rugby Sevens tournaments this year and have named train-on squads for both the men's and women's national teams in preparation. PNG Rugby Union have named the train-on squads for both the men's and women's national Rugby Sevens teams, the Pukpuks and the Palais. Both teams will be preparing to take part in the Oceania qualifiers for the 2022 Birmingham Commonwealth Games and the Rugby Sevens World Cup to be held later this year in Brisbane, Australia. The men's team will be coached by former Puk Puk Rugby Sevens and 15s representative Ian Lechlech, while John Larry makes his return as the coach of the women's National Sevens team. Both Puk Puk and Palais Rugby Sevens will eventually be trimmed down to 12 member sides that will travel for international duties. Both train-on squads will head into camp in Port Mosby on Monday, 16th of January. Haxi Lovai, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. The weather report is next. All the details after the break. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow, southern region, Port Mosby and Kerma, partly cloudy with chances of patchy showers. Popondeta mostly cloudy with some rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Daru partly cloudy with a shower or two, Alotau partly cloudy. For the Mamase region, Lei partly cloudy with chances of brief showers. Medang mostly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorms. Wewek mostly fine, partly cloudy. Vanimo mostly fine. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau and Kavieng partly cloudy. Kokopo and Rabaul mostly cloudy with some showers. Kimbe and Buka mostly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorms. For the Highlands region, all centres, cloudy periods with some showers. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. Before we go, an update on our story tonight regarding the eviction of a family from their home. National Housing Corporation Managing Director Henry Mokono will respond to the eviction exercise tomorrow. It is also noted that NHC says evictions are normal businesses and it is only evoked when all normal administrative process such as notices are fully exhausted. And that's the way it is this Thursday, 13th of January, 2022. From the entire news team, have a pleasant evening. Bye for now. <laughs>